shadows that lie there in that old curiosity shop. All right, some more nice glass. Here's a daisy and button pitcher, which is probably period. I don't think I want to pay $8 for it. I like it. And look at this. This is cut glass as well. Look at those hearts. Yeah, so this one's pressed. This one's cut. But it's got a really bad ouch, ouch, ouch. I would have probably bought that for $7. Some radio station is blaring, so I have to talk. Down here in my basket at this thrift shop is another Japan platter. There's a ballerina uh, grill plate, a piece of milk glass, another basket, Duncan Miller basket, and a little bird uh, flower frog. We'll take a closer look at those outside. I simply was not really able to film and talk about those while, uh, you know, while I was, what am I trying to say? Yeah, okay, I think the music is too loud. Let me turn this off. Well, you know, I normally fuss about the uranium slash Vaseline glass debacle, but today I'm gonna to fuss about something else. That is not Star of David. It has never been and never shall be. <laughs> that is an anchor hawking piece of glass and anchor hawking never called it Star of David. Uh, somewhere along the line, collectors just made that up. I guess you know either put it on a price tag or put it out on the internet somewhere and now when someone does identify it correctly uh, they get corrected incorrectly <laughs> does that make sense okay so the pattern is called early american press cut and press cut was spelled p-r-e-s-c-u-t made by anchor hawking mass produced in the 60s very popular there is a ton of it out there it's nice stuff it's good thick glass it was inexpensive glass it's not expensive at all uh, when it was made <clears throat> and you could get everything in this pattern all types of pieces for the table um, it has nothing to do with eapg to further confuse everybody it's not a piece of early american pressed glass Made in the 60s, but Hawking called it early American press cut. But oftentimes today, you'll see it listed as Star of David, which is a bit of a stretch because that really isn't even a Star of David on there. But uh, I'm not trying to be picky about things. It's just that, uh, once again, trying to get buyers and sellers together. Early American press cut, not uh, Star of David. Now that, <laughs> I have no words. I mean, oh my gosh, you could fit like five of me in there. What, what on earth? Is this like, this looks like some big, I don't know. Hello, 1980s office chairs. This thing just kills me. Now, the four-poster over there is nice. I guess, you know, different tastes for different folks, right? Isn't that how that song goes? I'm at my restore. Look at all of these beds. Uh, $5 each. $5 each on, on that you just mix and match the beds any way you want. Now, that's not an antique one, but... I love stopping here because you absolutely, one of these days, I'm going to find my kitchen sink. I can't believe this, this bed is a monster. Is that what you call, um, what do you call it? Something king, uh, king ding, <laughs> what is it called? Uh, no, it's a state. I can't remember the state. Drat. Uh, California. Is that what that thing is? My word. Mm. All right, I'm loving this kitchen cabinet. I'm loving it. Now it needs to be repainted. It's a little, but I could do something with that. Let's see if she left any depression glass in there. She didn't. She left her, she left her uh, shelf paper. I could recycle that. 
that's a good solid wood piece. Too bad it doesn't have a bottom that goes with it. I don't see a price on it. What is this thing? Oh no, never mind. That's brand new. Toilet, toilet. Toilet time. Now let's see. I don't see any 1940s. I don't see any 19 depression era uh, kitchen sinks, not yet. Don't you worry, they're out there. I'm really re not ready to do anything yet. Wait, maybe that's the bottom of that kitchen cabinet. I'm trying not to make you guys dizzy. Um, I wish my basement ceiling were this tall. Ooh, let's get away from these toilets. All right, uh, let me turn the camera off until I can get settled. Wow, look at this little oak table. Doesn't it look like a, a miniature uh, breakfast nook table? We're going to see it uh, once I get it home on the front porch. So you know I bought it, and it is authentic to the 1920s. It's made of solid oak. I looked at the construction. It's very small. It's absolutely perfect for like a little, uh, well, a little breakfast nook table. Might be able to use that out on the porch or in the old kitchen. Now, it could have been in someone's home. Maybe it was from a little ice cream parlor or a little coffee shop or something like that. Uh, wonderful. And it was cheap. Cheap. Less than 20 bucks. Yeah. All right, there's that bird again. That boyd that was so popular in the 20s and 30s. Generally call it a bird of paradise, but... Um, you know, without getting too picky about what type of bird it is. Seven dollars, yeah. I like lusterware. But I didn't think there was a whole lot of meat left on the bone with that price, so I put it back. There's that Homer Lachlan Nautilus stuff from the 1930s. I've got a whole set of that complete. So I didn't need any more. Typical, you know, sometimes cups weren't marked. 
but plates would be. And somebody's already pulled several pieces of it out of the package. Now what are these? This looks like maybe something from the 80s. Doesn't it look like 80s Mikasa or something like that? With those colors? It's pretty. Yeah. Some more of it back there. I'm trying to see if the plates are marked. And... Well, if they are, they're under that price tag. So we'll leave them right there. Mm. Oh, somebody's gift plate, and it got donated. 2005. Mm -hmm. Let's go look at an old chair now. Well, there's a nice little Windsor chair uh, for $8, and it's about 100 years old. Yeah, that ch chair dates back to the 20s. Um, leaving it here because I don't need another chair. If I bring home one more chair, the well, I could put it in the attic. <laughs> I plan on doing some antique shows this summer, and um, I just love these old chairs. It's in good condition, as you can see. Oh my goodness, okay, I forgot. I've got the attic I can fill. <laughs> I can always hang it from the rafters. Uh, okay, in the truck you go. Change my mind, live. Well, let's have a close up of this little oak table. It's hard to say exactly how it was used. I do know and I can tell by the construction, by the screws underneath, by um, the oxidation of the wood and all of that, that once again, it's probably something that is actually about a hundred years old, probably dates to the 1920s. Now, whether or not it was a little tiny, uh, sort of like a little cafe table, you could certainly put two little chairs and have two little cups of coffee on it. So it's possible that it did come from some type of commercial, um, establishment could have been used in a school I mean it just it doesn't appear to be homemade and I know that when I look underneath um, my, my my guess my guess is is that it was a little luncheon table or something that probably was in maybe a little soda fountain or a little store like that um, with maybe two chairs on either side so I haven't really decided uh, how I'm going to use it yet but you can see, like, right now I have it in front of this chair that has no cushion in it. It's a perfect little size table to pull up, like, in front of a chair, and you can work on it. So it would be a perfect thing to sit in a chair and work at that. Um, it's probably something that I might even be able to use in the kitchen. Um, I just haven't decided yet, but it was dirt cheap. It was less than 20 bucks, and it's solid oak. And it's just going to be, it's, and it's really sturdy. It's going to be a nice piece of furniture. Um, we'll get these little gouges out of the top. And uh, good and heavy, no veneer. Um, I just love that little thing. And as I said, it's going to be very useful. Now let's go take a look at that Windsor chair. Well, yes, I did buy it anyway. And didn't really realize until I got it outside and turned it upside down that it is signed with an N over top of an S, and that is Nichols and Stone. I've had Nichols and Stone, well, in fact, I've got two of them in the house right now. An old, old New England furniture company known for uh, chair making. <laughs> Actually, uh, so the mark on this one, now that I turned it upside down and saw the mark, it's a mark that probably dates it to sometime in the early 1930s. I guess I should let you see it. Uh, I paid eight dollars for it, so we will flip it upside down, and thank goodness the mark is right there. So I got that raggedy old sweatshirt on again here, but I didn't wear it out. I put it on when I got home to work in the house. Uh, right there. So you see the outline of a Windsor chair and NS, um, Nichols and Stone. Did I say it the other way around the first time? 
Somebody has glooped it up uh, with an extra coat of varnish or shellac or something on it, but it looks like it was done quite some time ago. That's glue from somebody regluing one of the legs and that glue can come off every single <laughs> interior, Colonial Revival interior in the 20s and 30s had to have some type of a Windsor chair. You just had to have one and we can see that that's what that is. So the original finish uh, was okay on it, but somebody put another coat on it and that's fine. It still has a nice, nice old warm wear to it. Great old company and a quality chair. So I hope I'm getting it all in there. I've got other things out here. I'm trying not to step on out here on the front porch. Okay, so let's go on in the house. Now, this is something I've wanted to do for a long time. If you have purchased items from me in the past, you know that they often come wrapped up in old grocery bags. Well, I better not say old. They're brand new and they're unused. Now, of course, when I grew up, the big grocery store and still the major chain around here is the Acme. Yeah, the Acme that you see on Bugs Bunny. So we always generically referred to these as Acme bags. So if you hear me slip in my conversation, that's because I've been calling these things Acme bags for the last 55 years. Anyway, this is how I do it. <laughs> I have a good friend who is a manager at an Aldi in Philadelphia. And they let me buy, I don't get a discount, I pay what anybody else pays, but I get to buy all of these uh, grocery bags. There's 200 of them in here. And the reason why I go over to Philly to get them is because you cannot get paper bags in the state of New Jersey. You can't get plastic bags either. Cross the street in Philly, across the street, across the bridge, you can't get plastic bags, but they are still using paper bags. So the irony is the bags are made in Vineland. That's not Vinland. <laughs> you hear people call it that. Vineland, New Jersey is in South Jersey, uh, not too far from here. And this is where Aldi, uh, they have a distributor there. So they make the bags in New Jersey, but you can't buy them in New Jersey. Is this making sense? You can only buy them in Pennsylvania. Now I know, I know, I know, everybody's gonna say, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Um, there are, there's other packing paper that you can use. You can use newspaper, which covers everything in ink. I sometimes use newspaper. You can buy the little packing paper at different packing supply stores. There's bubble wrap, there's peanuts, there's all kinds of things you can order. I like these. It's, it's fairly economical for me to do it this way. Uh, and I just want you to know that I'm not using dirty grocery bags that have somebody's pork chop, pork chop drippings uh, in the bottom of it. I get them new. Okay, recycle, so this can be recycled. And um, I rip the bags apart. Well, you guys already know if you buy from me. And I usually get a lot of compliments about how well everything is packed. This is very stiff, heavy paper. And if you crumple it up right, it really protects the things in the boxes. Now that does not mean that some things won't get broken if a box is mistreated, uh, you could wrap the thing in steel and it would probably still break. But I have very few breakage, breakages considering how many hundreds and hundreds of packages I ship. And I use these a lot. Just a suggestion, you might be able to go out to your local grocer and get a bunch of grocery bags. Uh, not too terribly expensive. Yes, I know you can go to your newspaper if you have a little hometown newspaper and they used to anyway give you for free. Now they might sell you or they might not at all. The cutoff ends 
of the newspaper print, which doesn't have print on it any longer. Uh, you can do that, but still that is quote flimsy uh, newspaper print. Sometimes that's okay, but sometimes you need heavy paper and there's not really any paper heavier than paper bags, Ac Acme bags or Acme bags as the old folks say, Acme bags. I just wanted to tell you that in case anybody was wondering why, where is he getting all these bags? I pay for them. Okay, that's it. Let's go inside.